You might remember my next guest from the TV hit series, The Sopranos. She played the mother of Christopher, a guy who just couldn't stay out of trouble. Hey, Mom. What the hell are you doing here? You scared me to death. Just stop by. See how you're getting along. You ever do anything like a normal person? There is a bell. That was Marianne Leone, the actress, author, activist. She's now opening up about her complicated relationship with her own mother, an Italian immigrant, single parent. Her latest book is called Ma Speaks Up. It's a first-generation daughter talks back. Marianne, who, by the way, makes a mean lemon square, too, joins me now. Marianne, it's great to see you. Just spoke to a mother who uh, spent years with her family advocating for her son. Uh, you and your husband advocated with kids with disabilities after your son, Jesse, had severe cerebral palsy. Do people like me get it? We, act, we, we think we get what life is like for you, for Nancy. Do we or do we not? I, get, uh, I think that once you have a child, your whole life takes on a tectonic shift where you imagine the, all kinds of terrifying possibilities. And I guess as it's happening... You're just in it, and you fight, you know. You, you know, with Jesse, it was from day one because he was so premature. You but know? you don't, do you resent us who no, don't have, no. do you I, don't? No, I feel like, I get that you don't get it. Oh, you I, really do. Do. I get that you don't. It's just like when you lose a child and people say, I can't imagine. You say, good. It's lucky you're not an actor or a writer. You know, something <laughs> else you do know, Anastasia Somoza, who most of us had never heard of until she spoke at the DNC, Democratic National Convention, you actually know the family pretty well. Here's a little bit of that incredibly memorable speech. I fear the day we elect a president who defines being American in the narrowest possible terms, who shouts, bullies, and profits off of vulnerable Americans. That was really electric, as was a piece you wrote for The Globe. Donald Trump doesn't have a clue about my son. What did you say that day? Well, I mean, it was when he mocked that uh, reporter with a disability you know, Thomas, yeah. and uh, whose hands were almost exactly the way my son's hands were. And uh, I just, you know, Hillary, the, the whole idea was that, I mean, they were both running at the time, and Hillary was so keyed into disability. I mean... That's what broke my heart the most that night, thinking of Anastasia at the Javits Center, thinking of Anastasia who would have had a really good position in whatever, um, in disability rights. I don't, I don't even know, is there disability rights in his, or are they just taking away well, I can't everything? Answer that. So can we talk about you for a second? Sure. You, were, you said at the time you wrote the book about your kid knowing Jesse, you said it was a way for me to spend more time with Jesse after he died. Is that part of the reason you yes. wrote this? Yes. Is that really yes, what it I'm is? Yes, I'm really selfish. It's like, also, I just, you know, part of it, too, is that my mother was really singular. She was really memorable. And uh, most of my friends have quotes about her and still <laughs> talk about her. And uh, I thought, you know, this is a character I really need to. You know, Marion, you write about write her, about I would it. say, with great warmth. But you didn't. No, always feel I was like a horrible, great horrible warm. child. You were a horrible child. Horrible, horrible. And why, and then what was the tipping point? Because I that... wanted Donna Reed. I wanted, you know, <laughs> I wanted the woman in I the wanted sh Donna Reed, too, uh, by yeah, the way. Yeah, for That's different, prurient yes, reasons. Please. But I wanted her to be wearing a short waist and speak in a melodious <laughs> voice and make um, horrible jello molds. And um, she, you know, she was un-American, and it freaked me out. The, the culture was so strong that I just, I wanted to blend as... And so she embarrassed you too, she right? She embarrassed me. So um, what was the turn? What was the point at which you all of a sudden you know, realized what you had? There? You know, when I when I went through my own rebellious stage, it started, the spillover happened, and I started to realize that she was actually really funny. And uh, there's something that I can't quote here on, um, <laughs> but um, it was actually when my father died, and she something she said to the nuns who um, were trying to comfort her um, that made me look at her in a different way. And uh, I think we both. Uh, evolved kind of at the same time and then when I had my own child that was it I and mean, they were pretty close yes yes Jesse and my mother were really close and I mean it touched me because he was nonverbal and she had trouble with the English language so there was that incredible <laughs> so there, was, so, there was a real can you tell a couple of stories that I just love this book is terrific and it, it's so you I don't even know you that well but the little I know you it is really you I should say I think uh, tell the story about your mother meeting uh, Chris Cooper, your husband's uh, uh, parents. Well, they hadn't met. We, we had been married for two years, and neither side had met. This was arranged by Chris and I. Mm -hmm. We 
had summer stock, blah, blah. We couldn't get married. We eloped, basically. Your husband is obviously Chris Cooper, the actor, for those who don't know. Yes. So I was home on a random visit, and I got a call from his mother saying, Mary and Dad and I are here. We're at Mass General. I had to, I had to invite her to dinner. So, um, of course, Chris was in London being directed by Harold Pinter in with Lauren Bacall, but as insane as that is, it was more insane at my house, and I had to take my mother and say, don't say the F word to the speakers. And um, she just shrugged me off. She was really angry. But then when the mother came, she was like, oh, you know, Chris's mother was this gorgeous, tall, blonde, all-American woman. She was like, oh, you're so beautiful. She was all over her, and uh, the father was really enjoying the lasagna. Everything went great. I thought, this is great. My whole family were, like, stiff, frightened. I went into the kitchen to make coffee, and I suddenly heard Anna Magnani being channeled through Benito Mussolini when she said, no. I was like, no. And I hear the father saying, now, Lindy, you just can't. No, when I want to die, I die. I was like, <laughs> so she's having an argument about euthanasia with uh, Chris's. And uh, in the end, she never did say the F word. She won the argument on euthanasia. Well, that's a and triumph. Um, I, she said about Chris's mother, yeah, the mother looked like nice, but don't cross her, right? <laughs> Speaking so, of look a nice, what, one of the great lines in the book is your mother is talking about how you look. And she says, you look a nice like a prostitute. <laughs> now, now, what did, she, did she mean that as you a know, this compliment? Is one of the many mysteries of my mother. Language? But she, she hated the way I dressed from when I was a teenager, just wearing the sloppy jeans. And, the, and then she hated when I wore these big nunny flax sundresses, <laughs> totally not sexy. So one day I wore an actual form-fitting dress, and she said, you look looking nice, like a prostitute. <laughs> and I, I never even stopped her at that point. I thought, okay, in her own mind. <laughs> Can I tell you something? You're looking nice. You really do. You look Thank really you. nice. Like Mary Leone, your book is fabulous. It's <laughs> called you. Ma Speaks Up and a First Generation Daughter Talks Back. Get it. It is really terrific, Mary. It's great Thank to you. see. And thanks for the lemon squares.